Toilet Paper Diaries newsflash, Hope Hicks has triggered the domino effect as President Donald Trump now has tested positive for the coronavirus. What will that mean to the world and to America? That's coming up next on Toilet Paper Diaries. What uh, development? I mean, a couple of days ago we were doing the show and obviously we are not uh, political analysts or we are not uh, news anchors. However, uh, we have been reporting each and every one of the uh, issues that people care about since the pandemic started. And I believe that this is uh, the most important report we're going to be making so far in these um, seven uh, odd months. I would agree it completely, Ernesto, to turn around and find out that Donald Trump has now tested positive for coronavirus. I mean, first of all, let me say before we have any analysis of the whole thing, that we uh, our hearts go out to, to Donald Trump and his family, and Melania and to Hope Hicks and anybody who catches coronavirus, whatever their political affiliation, nobody should have to suffer from it. It's, it just shouldn't be there. But let's yeah. look at in context what this means. So let's dial it back to the very beginning where once we knew about the coronavirus, because we all have been in lockdown, it was revealed recently that um, Donald Trump knew about it, how bad it was, but played it down, hoping it would disappear. That yeah. includes the rallies that went ahead, that includes the masks that refused to be worn, and that includes the 200,000 people that have died as a direct result. Now, as from a neutral point of view, it's really difficult to not turn around and say it's irony, the situation that is there, where the guy who said it doesn't exist is the guy who's just caught it. But that's kind of in your face. It's the elephant in the room. Yeah. And it is, uh, it is very interesting because the three leaders in the world that have actually caught coronavirus have been three leaders in the world that have denied the fact that uh, coronavirus actually existed. So we have... Uh, President, um, uh, what was the name? Sorry, from, from, Brazil. from Brazil. We had Boris Johnson in the UK, which we also covered in the uh, in the toilet paper diaries, and right now Donald Trump. And uh, you know, last night at uh, exactly eleven fifty four at night, I was just about to go uh, go to bed when I actually got his his uh, tweet, and uh, I said to myself, "Oh my God! I mean, this is just crazy because now this is going to trigger." a really big uh, domino effect. So I think that's why it's important that we start putting things into context because I went already and started looking at, at uh, Twitter. I started looking at Facebook and uh, there's tremendous disbelief from uh, some people. There's also people which are talking about conspiracy theories and uh, all sorts of things. So let's try to be as uh, realistic and as accurate as we possibly can. <laughs> So let's start off by saying that we were looking forward to talking about the debate, which was a real mess. I'm putting that into perspective. Forget that. That's old news. It's every day that something more crazy comes out. But as a result of that debate, um, Joseph Biden and his wife have been tested. They are negative. Um, of the people in the White House, it's already been shown that Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner um, are negative as well. Um, the rest of them we don't know about. So it would have had to be something that was contained, but amongst somehow it got into the White House. Because I know that they're saying that there's rigorous testing around the president, that his inner circle are tested on a regular basis, that everything in the White House gets sanitized. But it just goes to show that it doesn't matter what you're doing, you will catch it. If you do go out without a mask on, no social distancing, and he was going out to rallies and so on, they actually say that he may well have caught it on the helicopter with Hope Hicks, who got on as people knew already she was positive. Yeah, and uh, here's a, here's a challenge. I mean, he has been also with uh, Amy uh, Coney Barrett recently. Of course, of course, he was not uh, symptomatic yet. Uh, but still, he could spread it. I mean, he has been in several rallies. Yesterday, he was in Duluth, uh, Minnesota, and uh, he's been throwing caps to to, uh, to the audience. Uh, he's been shaking hands with a number of people. So my first concern on the um, 
domino effect is okay the first thing he now becomes an infectious outbreak point uh, of some sort so i think within the next few days we either hear that there's a lot of people that got uh, the contain into the contagion cir circle or there aren't and uh, if they are what's going to happen is that uh, of course that's going to start triggering a number of things if there aren't there might be some uh, issues that possibly we're not going to hear too much in the media, but uh, it might be, as they call in, uh, in football, it might be a Hail Mary. Possibly so you can I, explain a little I bit. That. I don't play American football. I'm about to go play any football at the moment. Can you explain what Hail Mary is? Yeah, Hail Mary is basically a surprise throw instead of a run uh, to, to actually score a touchdown. And uh, it's just a, it's just a surprise move. I mean, what uh, I mean, and this is this is you know I'm trying to get into the mind of Trump once again without being very uh, to take political sides. Sorry, <laughs> without being uncaring and cold. Exactly, and also not to take into the political sides. But I mean, right after what happened in the debate, uh, there were many things that. Uh, Possibly people didn't really like, and uh, they were many people. Uh, right now, one of the trending hashtags was I'm removing my Trump sign from my yard. So the hashtag removing, uh, removing my, my uh, Trump. So, I mean, he, he lost several people, several of the undeciders and whatever. And uh, what it might happen, and this is, once again, I'm not saying that this is going to happen, but this is what some analysts and some people are saying, well, you know, this is a great strategic play. Why did it happen right now? All the debates are canceled um, because it's not going to continue there. Suddenly he's going to emerge in the other side and said, you know what? I managed to do it. And uh, hydroxychloroquine is the absolute uh, answer to it. And uh, then he's going to go and win the election. So it might be an interesting move from Donald Trump to make it. And that's why I think this is a uh, Hail Mary. But anyway, I mean, I'm not speculating or anything, but we will be able to find out what happened if there's an infectious uh, group, an outbreak in, in people around that direction. We know that that's not the case. But if it is not, this might be the case. What are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts well, on that? I didn't know about the Hail Mary effect. I did suspect that, um, things that come full circle, if you don't wear a mask and you don't social distance, it comes back to bite you, which is just a Darwin will catch all feeling. I didn't expect it to be something that would be like this, but, but considering what we talked about and the smart ways that um, Donald Trump's played it with so many things in the past of misdirection and tricking people and sending them to look at that direction while he's working on other stuff, of denying about the, the white supremacists and say, I'll tell them, I'll tell them, and then not telling them. And all this different stuff is really hard to understand when somebody's constantly giving you mistruths and misdirections when they actually turn around and they mean it. There's a famous story about the boy who cried wolf. Mm -hmm. And this feels a little bit like it, but at the same time, um, it's a perfect storm in many ways because it could be completely true. For me, given a choice of is it a Hail Mary or is it a reality? I think it's a reality because I think the odds were so stacked that he was going to catch it at some point. The fact it's so close to now is probably because he stepped up the amount of people that he's been connecting to and pressing the flesh with. And at some point, it wasn't Hope Hicks. It was going to be somebody. So let's look at the actual nuts and bolts of that, though, Ernesto, because we're going to look at the actual succession of what happens in the White House. Trump has got to declare himself. He's going to hold on to dear life, obviously, but he's going to hold on to the presidency as much as he can. If he can't be, if he's not compass mentis enough to be in charge of the presidency, it's got to go to, to, to Mike Pence. But here's where the problem is. I'd love your thoughts on this. Who declares the president is incapacitated? And so therefore, let's hand it to Pence. There's no way that Trump will ever do that. No way. It has to be taken off him and he'll fight it. 
Yeah, well, that for me is not really too much of a concern because uh, right now the uh, election will continue. Uh, right now, there's 30 odd days to the election. And uh, what's going to happen is that uh, everything will continue. He's not going to be able to rally. Uh, if he's going to debate, he's going to have to debate through Zoom. That's going to be the, uh, the only possibility. And I doubt that it will uh, actually happen. So in my eyes, uh, it is, uh, I mean, what, what's, going, what's going to be the, what's going to happen in the next month that for me is the it's a big concern. I mean, uh, right now, if uh, God forbid something happens to him, uh, obviously it will be uh, Mike Pence, and uh, Mike Pence is not in the ballots, and that's going to that's going to also create a number of issues, I suppose. But I am completely ignorant to the fact of what will happen. So I think uh, whatever we say is going to be a little bit of speculation. So let's try to uh, to to focus on the facts. Now, what has happened, and this is something that uh, worries me because it, it actually did happen in Texas. Uh, I just saw that uh, Governor, uh, Governor Abbott, which is a, a governor that I, I, I like him. I mean, I, I uh, think he's a, a moderate guy. And I mean, I, I have seen him doing several very nice things. Uh, he suddenly ordered to remove all the, uh, th there's only gonna be one place for uh, setting up their ballots for uh, for the city. So, I mean, what, there's not that many places where you can actually go and do uh, deposit your, your your ballots. So making it more difficult for, uh, for people to vote. Now, I am not 100% sure if it's actually city per city or if there's going to be one in the entire state of Texas. I mean, the entire state of Texas is half the, half the size of Europe. So I don't think that that's the case. But I mean, right now, nothing surprises me. Well, he said, uh, I read that it was 12 places becomes one. So if you know what 12 it would have been becoming one, it's, uh, it, it ends up with about 4 million people have to go to one location to be able to vote. And uh, as I was saying, it's about, what, 75 to 100 miles of potential right. driving to then go and vote. And it's a de deliberate move to make sure that people can't vote. And... It's for me. It's it's horrible. It's it's so undemocratic, um, and it's so bad for the way that America positions itself. People around the world are just going to go. That stinks. That's really bad. So then you've got whether Amy Coney Barrett is going to be voted in, sworn in. I think they're going to still rush it through regardless because they want to make sure that everything that they can load is going to still be there. But then you've got to look at what happens with an election if it's not a Hail Mary and Trump does recover in time for the election, then Biden's got a great opportunity to start campaigning unstopped. Because there's nobody, yeah. when, when Trump makes the whole thing about him, nobody else can get any limelight but him. Yeah. It's going to be a case of watching to see the, the second coming of Trump and see how realistic is that. Um, I don't know how this is going to pan out. But what I do think is we are just looking at the tip of the iceberg of the things that can have a knock-on effect. If you look at what Abbott's done to, to Texas, what happens if it happens in every state that's Republican? It all gets driven into one particular place to be able to hand in your mail-in ballots. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. And uh, once again, we are not political analysts. We are not news anchors. We're not reporters. We are having a conversation with you. We would like to know your thoughts. We would like to know what you're thinking. Uh, I mean, right now, I guess because of uh, whatever I, I read in uh, Facebook, whatever I read in Twitter, whatever I read in LinkedIn, uh, people are extremely confused. This is another of those situations where everybody's really, really confused. And our goal here in the Toilet Paper Diaries, since the moment we started, we wanted to be your companions. And we're still here. We're still here. We're trying to, to have this conversation. Uh, the whole thing is for us to, to, to be there and start a conversation. We're still in lockdown. And, uh, By choice this, uh, in many ways. By our choice, choice in many ways, yeah. yeah. Here's, here's a question for Ernesto. Do you think that that announcement will make many Trump supporters go, oh my goodness, maybe we were wrong. He was wrong. Let's start wearing masks and using social distancing. Or will they call it fake news? Or will they say, um, he's gonna be fine. 
he's going to recover. We're going to do what we did before because it's only a, 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 it's only the flu. Yeah, I uh, I honestly do not know how to answer. I mean, uh, the, the the Trump supporters have been incredibly predictable in some case, in some cases, and incredibly unpredictable in other cases. Um, if in a normal year or in a normal situation, you would say, well, you know, oh my goodness, I was wrong. And they will try to correct the wrong. But uh, knowing all these, uh, and I will not mention the name because we might, uh, that conspiracy group, which uh, uh, is, is going on there, it will be very interesting. What is, what, what are they saying? Because obviously that's wow. going to be really putting the wow. whole thing on what's happening back. 100%. So, there are tons of people putting a spin on this saying this is either planted by Democrats to get him or it's all fake news to get him. Yeah. It's a case of waiting to see how this goes. And I've got to say that at this stage, I can't tell what's true and what's not true. And I monitor right across the board on, so on, on who says it. I mean, your, your guess and your news as is, is as valid as mine. Yeah. Because we just don't know. Yeah. So that's why I think uh, let's just keep on observing. And, uh, well, I guess we might have another flash from the Toilet Paper Diaries. But for today, I think, uh, at least for me, this has been very good. Because yesterday, I mean, I, I spent literally half my night watching this story develop. And uh, I tell you. The, the feeling that I got, and I didn't live in those times, and I can imagine it was the exact feeling that I felt or that I would have felt if I would have been there when uh, people heard that uh, President Kennedy was actually shot. I mean, this for me was really very shocking news. So, so what you're crazy. saying is it may be that we look back in years to come and say, where were you when you heard that Trump caught coronavirus? Very likely. Very likely. This is going to be this is going to be very similar. Where were you when you heard about 9-11? Where were you when you heard about Princess Diana? Where were you when you heard about um, when were you when you heard about um, uh, President Kennedy? When were you when you hear that uh, President Trump had coronavirus? It's very likely. And the only thing that's missing from that is where were you when you heard about Bill Clinton and the dress? On that bombshell, <laughs> we should probably call it a day. And uh, watch this space. We'll be keeping you with more updates as it comes along. Meanwhile, we thought it was important to log this and say where we are so far. And we'd love to have your thoughts and your comments. And as always, we're here for you with the Toilet Paper Diaries. Cheers. See you soon.